TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are not live, but you can leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Don't forget, if you do miss a live and we go live and you miss it, I don't know what I just said. This is where you can catch it. Links in the description. Don't forget, we got the Patreon. This is what pays all the bills. I do have to update this list. There's been several movies watched. There's new shows, all type of stuff. Um, and then we got the Discord as well. You can log on to that. But this is Traffic Cops Season 12, Episode 5. I was going to be done today, but, you know, I made a couple, a good cuppa. And I feel energized. So let's get into it. Oh, man, don't forget, man, first responder, shout out to y'all, man. Um, I was on a podcast, it's called Into the Lab. Go show some love, man. Go watch me on there, man. Support the guys, man. TLO. We try to do it. Anyway, yeah, links in the description. And longest intro. Eight twenty-four. I'm gonna get on the See if we can get some more Balthorners. I'll play bad cop. We'll swap. Yeah, you play bad cop, I'll play bad cop, how about that? <laughs> <laughs> it's just after eight in the morning. Traffic cops Richard Clark and Richard Ellis are out on patrol. Uh, just on three. Okay. This is good cinema, 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 uh, cinematography. I like how they got the angle. Great boss. We've got um, a unit saying it is a legitimate SMB. On the outskirts of York, an unmarked firearms unit is following a teenager in a stolen vehicle. Let's try and get a stinger in place. We'll sting it. Drivers, young lad, probably late teens, early twenties. In the UK, there are nearly three million drivers aged between 16 and 25. A male driver, he had sunglasses on and looked like a, a dark coloured beanie hat on. Young male drivers are four times more likely to be killed or seriously injured behind the wheel. Two, three on interrupts, onto the roundabout, stand by. Is that legal? There's no chair. I feel like he just did the roundabout wrong. He just cut the cop off. There's no reaction to my presence. Rich and Rich are just a few minutes behind the... F There's no change, no reaction to my presence. Rich and Rich are just... No, I would have needed a new partner. Sorry. I don't want nobody next to me. No, it, no offense, but like, I don't want to work with another person with the same name as me. It's weird. When you call my name, we both going to look. Like, we don't know what's going on. Like, nah, I'm good. Just a few minutes behind the firearms unit. Two, three, directly behind the vehicle. It's not reacting to my presence. Be marked, I'm unmarked. I'm unmarked, X5, boss. We've got one car behind it on a on a subtle follow. We don't want a reaction at this time without having other supportive units in place. Reacted. Two, three, this vehicle's reacted to my presence, gone through a red light, and I will consider this to be a pursuit. Can I have authority to continue, please? So we have the authority to take you facing granted. Hello. Well, no, we're coming. Speed is 9 0. Overtaking vehicles. 2 3. Still overtaking vehicles. My career, 98% of filter stops I've been involved in are all high speed, high risk, danger to everybody that that vehicle's going to come into contact with before it's stopped. It's not which Kentucky cooler will you try. It's. Clark and Ellis join the unit ahead, pursuing the stolen car. Do you want to bring a, a marked car? As Is it just me, or does Richard, Richard, Clark, and Ellis all look alike? 
It can't just be me. They all look like they can be from the same mom and dad. Front cars take the lead. 2 1 will come through. We're third car will come through to take lead. Stand by. 2 1 will come through. 2 1, second prime of day. Taking the lead in a marked car will help alert other drivers to the danger. Who we got ahead of us, please? Uh, Juno 9's coming, getting to the A1. 2-1, vehicle speed up to 110. There's multi-occupants in the car. Tactic to get to A1. Yeah. Speeds at 110 on these windy roads. Can't see around corners, Willie. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing this is not going to end well. Take this up to the A1 by the looks of things. The car is racing towards the motorway at over 100 miles an hour. And it's wet. The most dangerous place in a pursuit, a fast road or a motorway. That's the place you are most likely to get killed. Side junctions. Stand by, stand by, stand by, stand by. It's now off, off, off. Get tight, get tight. Let's see if we can get a box on this road. It's lost a load of speed. We're down to five zero. The team want to stop the car by boxing it in. It's dangerous, chasing bad days, but it needs a collective effort. And that's all of us go towards and help before. Somebody gets hurt. There's no traffic at all. Come by. Yeah, go ahead, Rich. Yeah, just regroup. Yeah, regroup. We'll go for it now. Move up, move up, move up. Shoot, right, we'll box on. Bring it down, bring it down. Bring it down, bring it down. He don't want to stop. He ain't want to. He ain't going. Bring it down. Bring it down. Bring it down. Stand by. He's broken out of the box again. How do you let that happen? You're in front. He's in back. And then there's there's two cars in back, and there's one police car in front, and y'all on a road that's this big. How does that? Got two occupants. Uh, it's definitely a front seat passenger. Young lad, probably late teens, early twenties. Speed is eight zero. Driving in the middle of the road now, trying to prevent us from passing again. So I'm going to try and get the uh, roundabout junction. Um, I'll try and get a signal at the end of that junction. Lovely mate, understood. Now into a twenty. In fact, what I risk now. Into a 28 over speed bumps out towards the A1. Straight across, clear. He's uh, failed to negotiate a giveaway. The increased risk is now going up. And up. Failed to negotiate a giveaway. Isn't a negotiation between two parties about who's to come to equal terms about something? He made the negotiation by himself. I'm gone. No. You've got people's lives at risk, including yeah. Rich, the officer. If I get it wrong, someone will get hurt. We've got to be switched on. That's where the training comes in. Failure to concede to give way. Medium race passing civilian vehicles. Back down to low. Off in ahead. Back out towards you now. Well, that's not... Passing now offside. He's going towards the roundabout before the A1. Speed is 6 0. Coming towards you now. Stinger. Using a stinger on the stolen car's tyres is the last chance to stop the suspect reaching the motorway. Coming up. In contact, the front tires about the wrong way around, front tires box, stand by. A speeding runaway driver putting 15 minutes. You were right. I don't want to see the coming up. I wanted this. I thought this was a real commercial. I was, I was like, wait a minute, am I watching TV? The timing was just too crazy. You feel me? Stand by. Shut, 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 shut right, we've got box off, bring it down, bring it down. 
seen this. We're going to take this up to the A1 by the looks of things. Yeah, you're across the unit, pushing up the A1. On the outskirts of York, a young driver is speeding at over 100 miles an hour in a stolen car. He's going towards the roundabout before the A1. North Yorkshire traffic cops Rich Clark and Rich Ellis want to stop the car reaching the motorway. A police stinger is their last chance. Nice one. Possible from near side uh, sting contact. Oh, the end of the yeah. I was about to say, did he just miss? The front tire has gone. The wrong way around. Front tire has gone. Stand by. Just trying to get, keep him clear. Trying to keep him off the A1 here. Stand by. Right, gonna have to put him out. Gonna have now. to put him out. Tactical contacts. We're gonna go for tactical contacts to keep him off the air wall. Oh, so they have to get permission to make contact or or what? Because he said something about it. Tactical, tactical. What did he say? Tactical, um, tactical. Collision. Tactical collision. Did they all roll just did they roll down the hill just now? <laughs> It looked like when they pulled him out of the car, everybody rolled down the hill. Cops, robbers, or or high speed people, everybody. You're under arrest for dangerous driving and failing to stop the theft of more vehicle. Do not have to but a man with defects in the major way question, so you're allowed in court. Anything you see, maybe get evidence to understand. Brilliant sting there by colleagues. Instantly takes two tyres out. He's lost some control and he's heading for the motorway. Pushing that car as hard as he can. He would have ended up in death and destruction for somebody. Yeah, missing tyres and the way he was driving. They had to do what they had to do on this one. So I've made the decision that car will not reach the bottom of that slip road. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. You all right, Rich? Yeah, good mate. Car, right? Uh, no. Get him up. Oh. Right, blow him in, mate, because I need to stop. You feel it's off the police. You've got the power to obtain a specimen of your saliva to test for cannabis and cocaine, all right? Stick your tongue out for us. Note on the log, please. 8.36, he was uh, locked up for theft. What if their tongues is, like, white? And they get to scraping it and like white stuff get to coming off like ugh. Motor vehicle, dangerous drive, felt stuff. stop. Stop typing. All right, test positive for cannabis. Further locked up, mate, for drug driving. All right, test positive for cannabis. In the last three years, drug driving has more than doubled to over 10,000 cases a year. You got me a drink out back of there? Right. Yeah, gonna get to the next. He was next. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Tad, Tad, Tad Caster. Unfortunately, one of our new BMWs has suffered a little bit of damage, but that car can be replaced people can. And those lads that have got on that motorway and they would have killed themselves at a step tight in front of a juggernaut dead or they would have endangered other persons. You know, all right, these lads have had it away, but ultimately they don't deserve to die. Their punishment isn't death, but they don't care about that. They're young, they're stupid and they're reckless and dangerous. That young man will be going to prison without a shadow of a doubt. He going, so he going to jail? That's a surprise. I don't think he's going to jail. I think he's going to get a non-custodial community, whatever y'all be saying, suspended sentence and some community service and a fine.
It's another if naughty then. boy off the streets, out of the way of public harm. No. Oh my God. God, why they gotta show this? I'm not gonna go see this. Boy, I don't watch that type of stuff. <laughs> I should have put not interested. Yeah, in the uh, update we've got this uh, nurse team is concerned about his injury. He uh, has facial injuries and there is a large amount of blood. Mail is uh, laid out in the road, Tony. Support. Clark and Ellis are back on patrol and have been called to a serious motorbike crash. We're uh, en route to a two vehicle out. I'm a motorcycle driver, man. I just paid my... Oh, oh my God. I ain't even tell y'all. So two days ago, right, on Easter Sunday, right, I go to McDonald's because my mom come, come here to do my daughter's hair. And she doing the hair. She wants some McDonald's. So I pull up to McDonald's and I order the food and, I, I, and they don't got no Sprite. Crazy, right? No Sprite at McDonald's. Anyway, I, I made a little joke. Ha, 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 ha. You know what I'm saying? We, I spent the corner. First window. Pull up to the first window. Bing, bing, bow. I look at dude. And he, um, I forget exactly what he say, but I ask, I ask for, no, 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 no. He tell me he's my total, but I can see it. You know how you can see somebody nervous? You can see somebody kind of nerve. I don't know if it was that or I was just seeing things, but like I could tell like it was some nerve about what was happening right now. And I thought to myself, what I what's going on? Are you scared of me? Like, what's going on? Why is he nervous? But why are you doing that? And this all happened within a split second. And I asked, uh, can I add a small fry to my order? And then he looked, and then I looked back down to get my wallet, and then he was like, the lit one? And then I looked up. Gee, I looked up. I looked. I was like, you know me? And then he was like, yeah, I watch all your videos. I was, oh, man. I was, hey, shook his hand. And it was one of the crispest handshakes that, you know what I'm saying? It was like these. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't no faking. It wasn't one of these. It wasn't one of these. You know what I'm saying? It was crisp. You know what I'm saying? And I, and I was just like, dang, that's the first time somebody has ever recognized me. I never thought that that moment would happen in America, but it happened in America and in Florida. It's crazy. It's crazy. I, 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 I was just as excited as he was. Shoot. I told everybody about that except y'all. I forgot. My bad, man. RTC, serious anyway. injury. Early information is a motorcyclist has gone into the back of a vehicle. But there's a nurse on scene who has been passing by and she's concerned for the motorcyclist. There's meant to be a lot of blood. When you get a bike accident, you do get that lump in your throat because it usually means either serious or a fatal collision. They have advised that there is no free ambulance anywhere in the area. What you mean? What the hell you mean there's no free ambulances? Get free! What you mean? Someone's waving us down here. No free ambulances. The young motorcyclist has lost a lot of blood and is in a critical condition. Which leg's hurting? Clue me, mate. There are no ambulances available, so it's down to the traffic cops, a passing nurse, and the rider's granddad to help. Your nurse. Yes. Just keep him talking. And your hair is done in. Come on, wake up. The granddad's here. The lad's my grandson. Received a quick call to say that he had an accident and was only 500 yards away. Five or six weeks ago, he gets his bike. Jesus. Tow that mug up. He hit something head first and slid, obviously. God. And unfortunately, we are where we are now. It's very, very traumatic. Come on, wake up. Can you hear me? When you arrive at these scenes and there is no other blue light services there, the one you really want to see is an ambulance. But they're not there. 
the worst place to be. You're still at school, college. When you're dealing with casual tears, the quiet ones, they're the ones that are slipping away. And this rider was quiet. Come on, mate, talk to us. Fifteen minutes, should you say? Right. Fifteen minutes is crazy. Fifteen minutes, ambulance, mate. 15, yeah. Fifteen minutes. Let's keep him talking. While they wait for medical help. It always feel like when, like, when it's a very, very serious, like, accident, like the ambulance take forever. But then when it's like an insurance scam or something, somebody faking being hit or doing something goofy, like they be right there. Rich and Rich begin their investigation. Uh, Rich and Rich is crazy. Money, Find what you love. Love. What you, he don't love that. Oh, wait. wait, 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 guys. Medical help. Rich and Rich begin their investigation. Well, that's the vanity. Hey, was that a van there? It was that there. Straight into the back of it. Big bang. Who's seen that van move? Clarky, that camera's got it all on. That black pod, half hit the drain pipe. Oh, yeah. That looks like it's caught the collision. The lads in the fencing van were actually sat in the van having a pot of tea. They've been startled by an almighty bang. Well, they've heard a bang. Come round. They've come running out and said you couldn't see. Because the sun's right in his face. They've moved it. It was underneath it, so they moved it to, to see if they could help him out. I don't think we're going to get any better evidence at this point in time. Yeah, I know. Low-lying sun, shining very brightly towards where the moped would have been riding from. And he's collided with a parked vehicle. Oh, he hit a parked car. I'm not gonna lie, when I was on my motorcycle, okay, so I was on my motorcycle one day, right? I was coming from, this is in Chicago. I got a CBR 1000 RR. Um, you know what I'm saying? I really be riding that well. But one day, it was in the morning, I was coming from my, one of my boys' house. Um, and I think I was coming down Lawrence, packed with traffic. And you know, I'm a motorcycle, so I got, there's, a, there's two lanes, you can go either, you can either go east or west in one lane each side. Um, so I'm going, it's traffic, and I'm on the side of the traffic, like on the right side, like in a bike lane or something, doing something not that, that's not that illegal, you know what I'm saying? Um, I do not condone that, but I was doing it, and a McDonald's parking lot was right there, so it was on the side that I was going on the entrance. And somebody was trying to, like, I seen an opening in traffic for somebody to try to turn and come in. And I seen it. Luckily, I seen it. I, 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 I like, because I always look because, you know what I'm saying, I be looking because there's openings. I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing is not the right thing to be doing, so I got to watch out. So I seen it coming, so I hit the brakes. I didn't even hit him hard. Like I didn't ski it or anything. I just could, I just didn't have enough room to fully stop. So I hit the car. I hit it. Boom. <laughs> but I hit it like I hit it going like five miles an hour, seven miles an hour. So the back tire lifted up and like almost flipped me on the car. But I, I'm I'm a little heavier, so I, I just moved, fell to the side, and I got up, and the person was still in the car. Guess what I did? Bike was still good. <laughs> Woo! Blinded by the sun, yeah, you've got to stop. Anything could be in front of you. You could have pedestrians walking across the road. Your eyesight's lost for even a momentary period of time. That can be catastrophic, as it's most likely been in this case. He's not seen it. He's not been able to react in time because he's not reduced his speed. Any update regarding ambulance? They've had to drive to divert to that the ambulance to another serious RTC, but this job is next on the list to be dispatched. Ambulance were on route here. This is serious. I don't understand. What do you mean? You gotta divert it to that other one. Keep talking to us. We want you to stay awake. 
open your eyes down and Yeah, so this ambulance comes, we get some pain relief. We got told 15 minutes. That's now been diverted to potentially another fatal RTC. And we've got a 17-year-old laid outside of the road in immense pain, I can only imagine. We're now back in the queue for an ambulance. I don't think that might be our lot, might be our uh, firearms car with pain relief. Hey, mate, lad down here, mate. Looks like potentially multiple fractures, top and bottom. And they can't move them because it's only going to make it worse because they're not trained. We've got our colleagues from firearms. They're all trained and first aid. They all carry oxygen. Oh, OK. Just relax this arm. Just relax this arm if you can. Right. What I want to do is just try and get your this fist on. Just get oh. off oh. All right, you OK? Hopefully, young lad, I'm hoping he's going to be all right. He's in and out of consciousness now. The young rider is unresponsive, but after a 40-minute wait, an ambulance finally arrives. How long have you been down there for? <laughs> I'm just saying, you couldn't, you couldn't ask for a better passerby. <laughs> well, like, it's a miracle. The passing nurse can now hand over to the paramedics. Twisted tea is a refreshing hard iced tea. Twisted tea is okay. I used to work for AB in New York. Um, I've more or less just retired. My husband's just driving along, we can see people trying to clear the road. You just do what you can, best you can. It's different with no equipment available, but hopefully everything uh, goes well. It was difficult to deal with him and not cry. The paramedics and the police, you can't sing their praise enough. They were tremendous. And I just hope now he gets a good recovery, but he'll never have another bike. Not while I'm breathing. <laughs> but it's not, it's not really anything he did or anything the bike did or anything, you know what I'm saying? It was, it's just sunny out. And he ain't have on glasses. He didn't have on shades. You know what I'm saying? I got one of those helmets. My helmet costs like five, six hundred dollars. It got the shades built in. You can pull them down. You can push them up. Like if it get overly sunny, I just push them down. And then when I get out of the sun, I just pull them up because I don't like to ride with the shades on. But I just like, you know what I'm saying? If it's a moment where it get like that, I got to. It ain't nothing really to use. OK. What's OK? Off to York. Broken leg. It was just an, un for it was just an unfortunate moment. OK. What's OK? Off to York. Broken leg. No, broken wrist. Not life-threatening. Not life-threatening. So we're wrist. happy with that. We've all been 17 at some point. I remember getting my first two wheels and you've got your freedom. But the flip side of that, you've got no protection. If you're involved in a collision on a moped. Oh, that's a scooter too. Okay. I don't think he'll ever get on two wheels again. Which, for me, is a win. Coming up. In the traffic lights for the toll bridge, done by for direction. It's true, traffic lights on red and it's a left, left, left. It's in four units, there's tracking has called in. The vehicle's currently headed towards Selby. Monitored, just entering Selby now. Nighttime is a critical time for the traffic cops tackling dangerous young drivers. Yeah, I've got you, uh, I've got you on the map. 18 miles south of York. A car full of youngsters has failed to stop for local officers. 431. Passengers of day camps, four out. Passengers of day camp, but the driver's made off, sped off at speed. Speed is nine zero. Extend to all units if you can all start making towards. 1655, where do I need to be? 
Two chases in one show. Now heading towards Cole. Make it towards you. Thank you. Highly trained pursuit officer Sergeant Leanne Anderson is joining the chase. Oh, so you don't move then. Speed is one zero zero. We're going to try and get ahead for a thing. No idea why it's failed to stop what's gone on. Speed is one zero zero. I am wow, coming down here 19, cool. making towards you. Yeah, monitor. The driver is reaching speeds of 100 miles an hour and is being pursued by two police cars. The vehicle went through the bollards. I think he was looking for an exit, but he's come back on again. It's highly dangerous to get away from a pursuing police driver because you've got to push yourself beyond your own abilities. They don't have great anticipation of hazards because they're inexperienced. They take unnecessary risks. Speed is 110. It doesn't always end that well for them. Vehicle stung, vehicle stung, and it's off the road. It's a crash, crash, crash. Oof. Just a reminder about activating your cameras. Hey, can, you come this room? can we have an ambulance, please? We call an ambulance now. And we could do with fire as well. There's uh, smoke coming from the vehicle. Let's try and get in the windows. Window smashed. We're going to have to get him out, mate. There's smoke coming from that. We're going to try and get you out of here, mate. All right. Bale is trapped in the vehicle upside down. So when you got a cut for a seatbelt? There is smoke. See, this is why I would never run from the police in a car. In a, for, in a car. I would never run at all. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm not a professional NASCAR driver. I'm not a rally car driver. You know what I'm saying? I don't know, bro. Yeah, we all understand physics and, and angles and this and that. What we think we do to a certain extent. But, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you really don't. <laughs> There's conditions that you don't know of. You know what I'm saying? 90 miles an hour going to crawling around the turn in a vehicle that's not tuned or specifically made for that <sighs> you're gonna roll a little bit um, to join the down. Oh, down. There you go. There is smoke. take it easy grab it yeah grab his arm oh, male is out of the vehicle out of the vehicle are you injured right, right sit down there. there we've got an ambulance coming his name to check you out buddy all right check it out of it mate it's got blood coming from his ear as well man. As there has been a crash during a pursuit, it's not just the young driver who's under investigation. I'm a Rhodes Policing Supervisor from North Yorkshire, do you want me to help? Yeah, if you could do it, thank you. Leanne will now oversee the scene and determine if any of the officers were at fault for the crash. State six. Jeez, pop That's a good question. He's unconscious, mate. He's gone unconscious. Okay, an ambulance is now being upgraded to a category one XH. That's a good question because um, the other one of the cops that does YouTube's, he taught, he told me like he didn't tell me, but he did a video and he was like, um, like they sometimes they were they were they can be held responsible if something goes wrong in a um. And then you dig, you feel me? And a car chase. Because they didn't do the right things and whatnot. Or they pushed the chase too far, or they followed too close, or they... they were doing Have you got any traffic supervision? No, there's no traffic supervision on snow. Obviously, we're well into Humberside's area, so I'll just oversee it till they get here. And so we're just babysitting at the moment. So. Phil, are you all right? Yeah, 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 I'm fine. Who was in the car with you? Were you by yourself? Garrick and uh, uh, Billy were behind us. Behind you? Yeah. And was it just you two? Yes. As part of the investigation, you'll have to be breathalyzed and we'll go through that process because we've got a call out for some investigations. Can you breathalyze Phil and Phil, please, if you don't mind? And Another Phil and Phil? Phil, Phil, Richard and Richard, two partners. Yeah. Just um, make a record of that for me. Paramedic state of six, just doing his initial assessment. When the fire service come down to check that car over, yeah. make sure they only do the very minimum to make sure it doesn't set on fire and not to move anything else. You no, know, putting things out, doing anything other than that. Potential for internal injuries, but he's refusing any help. What was 
be up to it. They're not worried about it being a yeah. fire risk now. Um, That's uh, fine, you can stay it where it is. Loads of beer cans in it. I suspect he's probably going to fail on something because the car's full of booze cans. And then he's decided he's going to get up and walk to the back of the ambulance. Okay, is he under arrest now? Right. I don't think so. We will settle that then. Okay. Yeah. He's just refused some of the treatment at the roadside, i.e., he won't go on a stretcher, but they're still querying whether he's got internal injuries. He's travelled quite a significant distance in a vehicle out of control into a field. Blow, 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 blow. Stop. Blow. It's far as hell away from the road. Lovely. Run 23, the legal limit's 35. What's the results in the prelim? 23. Right. Drug white pending. Yeah. And Sophie's going to nick him now, fail to stop dangerous drive for now. And if he's blown 23, we probably want to have him for section four and fit as well. Okay. Do you want to further do unfit? Because he's blown 23, yeah. so we can suspect some sort of alcohol. I'm going to clear everybody out of the scene and create a new cordon. There we go. It's way further back than what I thought. Where the wheels probably first hit the kerb, the fresh, fresh gouge mark is there. If you stand and look at that, to where the cars ended up and the tracks through the grass. It's travelled about, that looks about 50 metres to me. Hey. There is no real understanding of why he failed to stop. He perhaps thought that he might be over the drink drive limit. He's very lucky to walk away from it because he's been doing 100 miles an hour. At the point that you hit the verge, you have no control of that car anymore and it looks like it's probably rolled several times. There's quite a large number of young drivers that fall into that trap of being naive. I can't even imagine. I ain't never been in an accident that was critical like that. Um, I've been in a couple, like maybe two. But like as far as like rolling over and things of that nature, oh man. Not really aware nah, of the dangers. Really Definitely have a lot of overconfidence. There's still that big element of needing to show off to people. They just want to put the foot down and go. More than 100 young drivers are caught speeding every day. It's the most common offence by youngsters. Worked hard today, or? Yeah, we've been all right. We dropped on a few, didn't we? Four-hour well, shift, and we've had a 15-minute sit-down with somewhere. Near Tadcaster, traffic cops Rich Clark and Rich Ellis are helping an HGV stuck on a dark country road. Go ahead. Good after the range of police powers recovery, please. I'll receive. Lovely, thank you. It chose this location here to, to stop for the night and have a rest, and it's just caught the soft grass verge and sunk the cab into it. Just seeing a car come round at a stupid speed, really, and narrowly avoid our police vehicle. All of a sudden, this BMW materialises from the horizon. You know, he's not not messing about. What are you doing that for? That place through with games, get through with prizes. They're gonna get you, buddy. And um, this person wants to get somewhere quickly. I think everybody there got that feeling that something's gonna happen. There's a nasty accident a mile back there. How far up? A mile. We'll have to have a look. There's a nasty accident a mile back there. How far up? A mile, buddy. You just said it. That way. How far up? A mile. We'll have to have a look that way. Minutes later, a passing driver alerts the officers to an overturned car up the road. 1600. A member of the public has informed us the vehicle on its roof, probably about a mile from our position, so we're going to have to go and see what's happening. Yeah, okay, thank you. The first thing I thought was it'll be that bloody one, one series, whatever it was, scoot past. Oh, there we go. Uh, oh, it looks like that. Is it? It's that beamer, isn't it? I'm talking buddy on the middle of the road. Upside down, bloody toe. That's crazy. If you're an independent business, get HoneyBook. Oh, HoneyBook. 
okay. I, honestly, I'm going to turn on my ad block. I always forget it. And then when I go back and I edit these commercials out, it's like, dang, if I would have just put put the ad block on, I wouldn't have had to be one of the best editors on the platform and take them out and things of that nature. You feel me? Uh, a BMW came flying past us earlier. Looks like it's lost control. In North Yorkshire, traffic cops Rich Clark and Rich Ellis have been called to an overturned car that had sped past them just a few minutes Ooh. earlier. But it is completely overturned, blocking both lanes. As soon as you've got a car on its roof, speed as well, and you've rolled a vehicle, it's crumpling under the weight of the impacts. The occupants are essentially inside a washing machine. Your body's loose and limber. It doesn't take much to break your arms, break your legs, break your neck. So when you see a cow on the roof, alarm bells are ringing. Whose car is it, mate? Do we know? This ladder here. Did you just come up, you just come up and yeah, yeah, feed it? Yeah, Love it. Thanks. Hello, mate. Is it your car? <laughs> your mum's car. You came flying past us, mate. You know what? When I heard that there was a car crashed. Do you know what I thought? It was that black BMW, yeah, that's... for obvious reasons. What are you doing in your, what are you in? Your night, night dress? Going, yeah, yeah. Uh, how are you feeling? You got a day? Have you had a drink or anything like that? Yeah, I've had two beers, but... Okay, okay. Mate, if you've walked out of that, you've been a lucky lad. But we need to look at you. Have we got an ambulance? Is ambulance here? My dad's just fed. Is he? In terms of car, are you, is it all legitimate? You. No. My mum's, I've brought it down to pick my mate up, and obviously right. I've not been down on his shirt, so what not. Right, have you got a licence? No, right, all right, mate. So I'm not driving a licence, no insurance. Hello, pal, you all right? Yeah, yeah. He's guarding his chest, he's guarding his right side, yeah. pulling ribcage, he's complaining of head a headache. <laughs> who, who did you phone? Did you phone ambulance? Yeah. Nah, smashing, mate. I, I start, I could say, twitching the uh, airbag in the window, so... Yeah. While I was ringing ambulance, I went over and he started beeping on. He's just speaking to paramedics now. He's also suggested he's had a couple of beers earlier on today, so when we get the opportunity, we'll be obtaining a specimen of breath. Just on my way home, there was nobody else on scene. I just dragged the door open and there he was. Pretty much unconscious. I think he was in a bit of shock, cold. Dressing down barefoot, walking on glass, so... Come and sat him in the car out of the way. <laughs> this is a night. What was he doing? He had the munchies or something. He was going to go get something to eat. Like what? Hey, tried to keep him warm. He's only a young lad, and he's uh, obviously made a mistake. Poor lad's got to got to deal with the consequences now, haven't he? He said to me, he says, oh, "I'm in trouble, aren't I?" I says, "Go on, the dad's a fed." His dad's a surgeon. His dad will go there. I know. I can imagine, mate. He said to me, "My dad works for the police." And straight away, you know, your eyes are rolling at that point in time. What have you done, son? What have you done? If that had been my lad, and I'd buy a car away and rolled it and had a few beers on board and then put me in that situation, knowing my profession. Yeah, nothing to do with your profession. All you're going to do is go on the complete. The all they're going to do is go back to work and be embarrassed. A couple of jokes are going to be said about you. Your son's okay. You don't get no strike on your record. Nothing's going to happen. You can't get fired. Not for this, at least. Like, come on. I don't condone his behavior. He's driving. But at that point in time, you know, I felt quite sorry for him because for all I could have his lifetime. 600 exam. Uh, we've got one male driver. He's admitted to take. I ain't gonna lie. As a dad, if my kid did that and I was and I was twelve, I'd just be like, "Bro, that was stupid." But you're alive. Are you okay? My son is still my main concern. If I lose my job over it, oh well. <laughs> is my son okay? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't even know. All right, continue. Taking the vehicle, it looks like his mum's car to pick a mate up. He's not got a driving license, not got insurance. He's complaining of head pains and also potentially fractured ribs. He's in his gym jams. He's got his dressing gown on. He's been driving in flip flops. And his dad's a cop. 
that's going to not play out well for him, is it? No. No. That, I mean, that's... You look that's at that, that's got bloody death written all Something over it in any other, in any other day, yeah? So, first point, first point of impact is going to be... Uh, there's his tyre marks. That's where his cork, his cork screwed round. So he's come down here way too fast. Last place you want to be in a car when it's rolling is a convertible car. It's a bit of canvas, isn't it, for the roof. Head onto the tarmac, game over. Unbelievable, really. Young lad thinking like he's on a racetrack. It's a moment of stupidity. You know, we've all been young, we've all done daft stuff. I ain't been that dumb. I ain't been that daft. But some people are just prepared to push it that little bit further, and the consequences can be catastrophic. The driver will now be checked for injuries at hospital. Sergeant Leanne yeah. Anderson is on patrol in York. Definitely, if you weren't yes. fit to ride one, you could cause some serious damage because they've got no protection. It's only like riding a low-powered moped. In most places across the UK, it's illegal to drive an e-scooter on public roads, but it is allowed in York as they are trialling their use. Oh, my God! <laughs> Hey, in Miami, this is the way of life. These, you see, everybody got one of these, like a personal one, like one for their own personal use. Like they went into the store and bought one, and they they be getting it. I'm talking these things were like 40 miles an hour. Some of them, I'd be like, yo, no way will I not own one of these in the near future. <laughs> I'm gonna get me one. I ain't even gonna lie to you. I went to New Orleans and they had these for rent. Like you could rent them on your through the Uber app or something. Well, I had the time of my life on this thing. Best moments. Far behind us on the scooter. Not yeah. steady. Shall I say? Mm. It's all over the place. He's wobbling, Is he going to stop? That's all derogate. Hi. Sir. You're a bit wobbly. Sir. We're only back. Yeah. Because honestly, you're wobbling all over the road on the scooter, so I'm a little bit concerned whether you're impaired. Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. What have you had? I'm have you had anything else? Sorry? Have you had anything else, any drugs or anything like that? No. And I can tell that he's a little bit cagey, but he's not what I would class as our normal clientele. When you stop really bad drivers, quite often they get out and start arguing with you. Can I uh, just wait a the second. ride on this? Give it a second. Give us a second. He came across a little bit as a rabbit caught in the headlights. He won't try to end the ride. He's not trying to continue to get charged while he talks to you. Let's not beat about the bush. You are driving a mechanically propelled vehicle on the road. All right, so I'm going to do a breath test on you. Yeah. I, Main but... concern you've got now is whether or not you are over or under the prescribed limit. Because if you're over, you take a trip to the police station. Imagine getting a, a DUI on a scooter, like one of these. You have a driving licence. I presume you do if you've got one of yeah, these. Yeah, Yeah. And you're aware that you, you can't ride one whilst intoxicated. You need a driver's license to drive one of these? You don't need one in America to drive one of these. Yeah. But you chose to do it anywhere? Yeah. OK. How old are you? Uh, 20. Young people don't really see the risks associated with these scooters because they do see them as a toy. You don't need licence and insurance to ride a pedal cycle. That's so I... I suppose young people maybe see them in the same sort of category. 
No, oh, hang on. Really Breathe in first and then blow into the tube. Don't okay, suck so the okay. tube, okay? Just blow into it. Go and keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. That'll do. So the legal limit's 35 micrograms of alcohol. You blow 91. Damn! Okay? So that's quite a long way over the legal. Woo! Boy, he was drinking, drinking. The limit. Okay. He was, hey. You was that? You ain't even. Oh, I was about to say you ain't even legal age. It's, it's like sixteen to drink out there, ain't it? 18. You are under arrest on suspicion of drink driving. So, okay. Sixteen fifty-five, Exxon. Hello. Embarrassing. Can you get a van for me, please? I'm on Hull Road. Eighteen fifteen, Exxon. We can assist with the van. We are uh, in town. Yeah, lovely. Yeah, uh, thanks. It's an e-scooter rider has blown 91 on device 159. Perfect. You've obviously never been arrested before or anything like that, so when my colleagues come with a the van, they're going to put you in the back of the van and they'll search you before you go in the van, take you to York custody, and then what we'll do with a breath test. He probably didn't think he was as drunk as what he was. And they're in the back for you. I'll see you at custody. Maybe thought, I've had a couple, so I'll be all right to get home. But it was more serious than first thought. Well, yeah, about 12. Yeah, no couple. 91. They do the incredible. Help save lives. 91 is. You almost had a, a one. You almost in the game. You almost triple digited it. You almost got a perfect score on that one. You almost got a 10 on that. You hear me? You almost did. You know what I'm saying? Simone Bailey's number. That's fairly high. The thing is about him as well, he knew it was an offence and he still chose to do it. He could have just walked home. Hello, so, um, where are your student at? University of York. Yeah. So do you want anybody informing that you're here? Yeah, I don't, I don't want to worry my parents, but I think it would be worth informing them. There were over 1,200 accidents involving e-scooters last year and nine people were killed. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. So you provided two readings of 91 second. and 86. 86 is more than twice over the legal limit, which means that you will be charged with the offence. You won't be charged until the morning, uh, right. until you drop down below the legal limit. Okay. So we'll put you in a cell and you can go to sleep for a bit, all right? Okay. It can be quite daunting, I suppose, for somebody that's so young, but ultimately, I suppose, he's got to grow up at some point as well and realise that what you do does have consequences. Over a thousand young drivers are killed or seriously injured every year, and males account for most of these. Late teens, early 20s, you're in play for being a statistic at some point in time, unless you're lucky. You can be a careful driver, be a competent rider, but Inexperience there is always against you. Youngsters are the highest risk groups that are involved in serious and fatal collisions, sadly. Life's full of decisions. Sometimes you make the right one, sometimes you make the wrong one. The level of devastation that comes with not really thinking about how much responsibility you've got when you get behind the wheel of a car, it's horrendous, it's horrific. Vehicles. In this episode, we'll go for it now. Move up, move up, move up. Right, we've got boxes. This is where we see everybody's charges, right? Oh, bring it down, bring it down. The young driver and his passenger who sped away from officers at more than 100 miles an hour who had to be forced off the road. We're going to go for practical contact to keep him off the air one. Are currently released under investigation on suspicion of dangerous driving, no license, no insurance, and aggravated taking a vehicle without the owner's consent. 
Police are also awaiting the results of drug tests on the driver. Your nurse? Yes. Just keep him talking. The young rider who crashed head-on into the back of a tipper truck after being blinded by the sun... Come on, mate, talk to us. ..is on a slow road to recovery, but has not sustained any life-changing injuries. So far, he hasn't ridden again. No action was brought against anyone involved in the collision. 4-3-1. Passing. My thing is, why was the tipper truck on, on the road instead of, like, in a valid parking spot? You know what I'm saying? Like, on the side of... Because they said they was pulled over having a cup of tea or something. Just of day camp, but the driver's made off, sped off at speed. The young man who raced away from police and ended up rolling his car into a field... Vehicles on its roof. ..was released from hospital soon after and did not sustain any serious injuries. He's been released under investigation on suspicion of failing to stop for the police, dangerous driving and no insurance. I wonder why they say under suspicion. Because it's like, OK, I get it, like, innocent until proven guilty, but it's clearly, like... The young man who took his mum's car for a late-night joyride was arrested for drink driving. Oh, it looks like that. It's that Beamer, isn't it? Taking a vehicle without the owner's consent and driving without insurance and a licence. He's also currently released under investigation. And the drunk e-scooter rider was prosecuted by the courts. People are 91, OK? So that's quite a long way over the legal limit. He received a £130 fine and was disqualified from driving for 21 months. Two years? And the truck. Almost two years for a scooter? Tell I leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post. I'm gone.